Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing my monthly speculation and investment video, this time with cons. There's some wonderful new cards out there, and I'm going to start right in Legacy. These cards are already appearing in Legacy decks. The Swift Sphere is just an amazing aggro card. One, two, with haste, if you've got a lightning bolt or two, you can be hitting for a lot of damage. I am super happy with this card. I've been playtesting it in Modern and in Legacy. It did really well at SCG this last week. Dig Through Time is also another crazy card. I think it's going to see play in combo decks and in control decks. Being able to get the two best out of your top seven cards is just amazing, and it's even at instant speed. I am trading for foils of this right away and picking up regular copies for my play decks. Treasure Cruise is clearly underpriced for mana. It is seeing a lot of play already in Legacy and in Modern. Your ability to fill up your graveyard is extremely high in those formats because of fetch lands, although you've even got fetch lands in Standard, and it just plays so well into a combo deck. I would look for all of these at the prices that are listed here. If you end up paying a little bit more, it's no big deal. I know that all of these cards have some long-term value. In Modern, I would watch Torpor Orb, Inquisition of Kozilek, and Amulet of Vigor. Torpor Orb shuts down a lot of decks. It's a great hate card. It's very popular in cubes. It's very popular in modern as a sideboard card. Usually I don't say speculate on sideboard cards, but this is one that's just underpriced because of how useful it is. Inquisition of Kozilek is at an all-time low at this $5 to $6 range. It will be going up. It's just because the event deck had several copies of it. Grab them now before they are $15. They will be a $15 staple again. And Amulet of Vigor is one of the coolest looking cards out there. I've seen some combo decks with it recently do well in Modern, especially with Primeval Titan. I like this card. I would pick up the regulars and the foils long term. In Modern, I'd also watch for Jeskai Ascendancy. It is a crazy combo card. It has already shot the price of Glittering Wish up because you basically have seven copies of it main deck if you put in Glittering Wish and a last copy in the sideboard. Uh, it is basically a storm combo deck where you use something like a Birds of Paradise to untap and draw a bunch of extra cards and get extra mana. I really like this combo. It might be too broken though. It may end up getting banned at some point. I don't think we've seen an optimal build yet and it's already doing well a week out of the gates. In standard, I would look at Crackling Doom and Butcher of the Horde. These are two cards that I did not realize how powerful they were until I started to look at some of the Mardu lists that have been coming across. Uh, from the SCG top eights. Both of these cards have a lot of potential to impact standard over the next year. I wouldn't be surprised to see both of them up over $10 each. I would also grab Anger of the Gods and Heroes Downfall. These are great removal cards. They do really well against the small token, aggro type decks, or goblin uh, rabble rouser, rabble master. I think it's rabble master. I'll figure it out. I'll put a picture of them in here. Um, Heroes Downfall was a $15 card last year. It's down to 8 because it was in the event deck. It's still the best removal out there. I think it's going to go back up again. I wouldn't keep it long term. It's not modern playable, so if you avoid them, I understand. A lot of people have been asking about the pre-release foils. What do you pay for these things? What are they worth? Are they worth the same as a foil? Are they worth the same as a non-foil? Traditionally, pre-release foils have been worth the same as a non-foil. But we have 40 different pre-release foils here, so they're actually a lot rarer than the previous pre-release foils. The only difference is this little stamp on there showing you where they came from. I am recommending buying these guys at anywhere between the price of a non-foil and the price of a foil. They may even be more valuable because they are more limited than the actual foils at this point, given that there's 40 different ones. I would only pick up the ones, though, that are eternal playable. Things that you'll see in a combo deck, or in EDH, or in Cube, or Modern, or Legacy. If it doesn't have that eternal appeal, nobody's going to care about it. These are the four that I'm trading for right now, with Clever Impersonator and Mantis Rider as my two favorites. In Commander, 
the sliver hive lord has started to drop in price he may even drop a little bit more i would pick him up now long-term slivers have life people love slivers and thespian stage is still at about a dollar to a dollar fifty incredible card in edh pick it up before it goes up supreme verdict is rotating out and it's down to three dollars this is a legacy and modern staple card it's got blue in it, which means it's worth more. People love to pay more for blue cards. I'm picking up as many Supreme Verdicts as I can. I try to get people to throw them in on trades if we're a few dollars off, and surprisingly they are. People don't realize how good this card is long term. Rotating out, we also have Wear and Tear. This is one of the most versatile sideboard cards, and it's going for almost nothing right now. 50 cents or $7 for a foil. This is a card that I don't expect to see reprinted anytime soon and that I'm happy to have extras to throw in my trade binder. If I throw them in my trade binder, I'm going to be asking a dollar or two for them and 10 to 15 for the foils because long term that's what their value is going to be. Right now I would avoid the high end Portal 3 Kingdoms cards and Damnation. We had hints that Damnation is coming back soon. My guess is it's going to be in the mono black commander deck that comes out very soon. Uh, Ravages of War is also another really expensive card that could see a judge promo very soon. I would definitely avoid most of Portal 3 Kingdoms unless it's a card that has been recently reprinted and already hit its price bottom and is starting to go back up. Fetches have changed the market and everybody wants to buy fetches. So right now people have even been liquidating shocks to buy fetches it's still a good time to buy shocks. I think you may even have another month to buy shocks before they start to go up. A year and a half from now, though, you're going to be happy to have held on to these shocks. Continue to buy shocks and hold them. You'll have a lot of trade power later. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We're almost at 5,000. I'm going to do some really cool stuff at the 5K mark. Thanks. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a speculation video. Also, thank you to everybody who's out there on Patreon. You help make the channel possible. If you want to join us on Patreon, I would greatly appreciate that. Thanks.